Hi guys, so last time we did NCT 127, now we're looking at girl groups again, and the one you guys have requested more than anybody else, Mamamoo. Let's get into it. Okay guys, I just want to say thank you. As you know, I'm not hugely well versed in girl groups, nowhere near as I am with boy groups, and without you guys, I wouldn't have really known to look at these guys. And I just want to say thank you so much for showing me these people, because of all the research I've ever done, of all the groups that I wasn't too familiar with, these are the guys I've went into and then came out of the biggest fan of. These guys are fantastic. Honestly, these are one of the best vocal lines I've heard. They're so captivating, their performance styles are incredible. And at this point, it's, this isn't really about the ranking this one because they're all unreal and have their own roles in the group. This is more about the analysis and I get that. Like, I'm going to go and explain what makes them so particularly good. So the order is going to be different for different people, but they're all fantastic. But either way, let's just look into them and make, look at what makes them all so fantastic. But this is exciting. Mamma Mia, absolutely fantastic. And thank you, guys. Okay, so unfortunately, someone's got to be last. Now, Moongil's voice isn't the best I've ever heard. But as weak as vocalist in a group go, she's pretty darn good. And obviously, the three coming up are insane. So we'll spend a little bit of time on her and see what makes her voice the way it is. Let's have a look. Okay, so Moonbeal's voice is not hugely practiced in singing. It's not bad, but compared to the other three, she doesn't have the vocal potential, the vocal colours, and the incredible power vocals, or anything like that. Her voice is deeper. She's got like a mezzo-soprano tone, which suits her rapping style beautifully. She has one of the more badass rap styles of any female group I've heard, and I love it when she comes in with that rap part in any of the Mamamoo songs. Um, her voice is decent when she sings, however. She stays low and connected. She doesn't really use a hugely airy, idle, breathy tone like a lot of weaker singers do. She seems to have a foundation of chest voice, and she seems to understand her voice pretty well. She seems to have an ability to stay in the lower keys that Mamamoo like to play in sometimes, and when she jumps in with a line here and there, be it in a more melodic style, away from her rapping, it sounds nice, it sounds pleasant. Yes, her voice isn't hugely varied, and the colours that she possesses aren't very many. She mainly stays in this lower full place. She doesn't really go into a mix like everybody else does, but she doesn't need to. Everybody else has that part of their voices down. So Moonbeal's voice it's good, it's nice, it's pretty consistent, but she doesn't use it for singing a whole lot because obviously the other three guys do most of the singing parts. But f the instrument that she has is pretty good. It's low, it's full, it's pretty thick, it's pretty smoky, and it's nice. Um, it doesn't go into a high register all that often, but it can be lightened now and again, be it in a head voice style or a little tiny bit of a mix. But she doesn't really operate too much in anything other than the low mezzo-soprano key, but she doesn't need to. So yeah, um, basically her voice is decent, it's fine, it's nice, it's pleasant, and it's lower and it's smoky. But she doesn't really need to do many of the hard vocal parts, and her badass rap style works really well for her tone of voice. So yeah, she's the weakest singer, but she's still a pretty good singer. Okay. So, objectively, Hwasa is the weakest singer of the three. However, when I heard her voice for the first time, I was like, oh my god. If I'm honest, of all the female idols I've heard, she has my favourite vocal tone and favourite vocal colour. Technically, she is the weakest, which I'll get into in a second, but I will just say, going in, she has a sensational voice. <laughs> Okay, so 
Okay, so Hwasa's technique is really, really, really interesting. She has a lower sitting soprano tone and she often operates in a lower key. It's not quite as thick or as full as Moonbeals, however, her voice resonates really nicely in that lower area, in the low fourth octave, kind of high third octave sort of place, but she sings quite airy. It's not massively light, it's really smoky, and it has a tessitura and a timbre that's really interesting and really nice. When she brings her voice up, she does stay connected a little bit too much, to the point where when she goes into her higher belts, they can often appear raspy and quite throaty. Now, that can sound really cool, and with her sultry delivery, it adds parts to Mammu's music that sound fantastic and sound super captivating and really interesting. That's the best thing about her voice. It is so unique, and I haven't heard many female idol singers sing anything like this. Most of them sing higher and airy, but... Hwasa just stays in the place where her voice sounds absolutely comfortable. It doesn't have mega power potential. As I say, when she goes in that throaty or raspier style, it sounds nice, it sounds big and sounds strong, and can occasionally move up into more of a chest dominant mix as it goes higher, but her voice doesn't sound mega comfortable doing that. She doesn't go in that area too often. When she does, it sounds amazing, however, but she doesn't operate in those really high keys. She can do, but she tends to stay lower and smokier, and she has a jazz sound. It's really rich and really thick and really nice but it's also mixed with an area delivery which makes it sound so sultry and so interesting and kind of sexy in a way if that makes sense but yeah her vocal color is her absolute strength her vocal tone it's so unique so captivating i absolutely adore it as female idol singers go, I haven't heard anything like this before and it's absolutely amazing. Just as she goes up, she doesn't have the technical proficiency of the two guys coming up purely because it sounds throaty and like it hasn't got as high to go into purely because it sounds more restricted with the really thick technique she implements as she goes higher. That is not a bad thing by any means, it adds character to her voice, it's beautiful, it's amazing. But yeah, it, it just limits her voice a little bit and lacks the versatility in the higher registers that the other two people coming up can access. But yeah, her voice is amazing, captivating, very full with character and has one of the most unique, lovely, lower, thick, rich, smoky tones that I've heard. Just technically she lacks a little bit compared to the other two, but she's still insanely good at singing. Okay, so this may seem strange having the main vocalist at number two. Sola is a fantastic power singer. I have an idea as to why she's the only main vocalist. Um, in my opinion, both of the people here deserve to be main vocalists. She is an insane singer. We'll get into the breakdown in a second, but yeah, I just want to preface that by saying I think there should be two main vocalists. Sola is insane, but so is the next person. Anyway, let's get into it. Okay, so Sola's voice is the power singer. She is by far the easiest person to centre the key around in Mamamoo's music, purely because she sounds so comfortable at this really big C, C sharp 5 area. So when they're writing the songs, people can do other parts, but they have that part in mind, and that's the part of the song that's really going to pop when she hits that big, powerful, chesty, mixed, mixed belt note. Okay, so Sola's voice, yes, she uses a low register occasionally. It doesn't sound as relaxed as some of the other people in the group. It's an area they use quite a lot and it's nice and it's smoky. And her voice again is kind of rich. She's got a soprano voice, but it's not a really high sitting airy soprano voice. It's a full connected soprano voice. So the thing that makes Sola's voice so particularly good, as I say, is that C sharp five belt. She has the absolute delivery of power in this group. She stays very, very connected. She uses a mix, of course she does, because if she didn't, it would sound really throaty and uncomfortable. It's a really chest dominant mix, however, which means that as she goes higher and higher, you can tell it's starting to be more of a yell and it lacks the kind of 
control, I guess, of the next person. It's still insane, and the power that she possesses in her voice in that area is beautiful, and the reason that they like that part to pop is because she can deliver that part extremely well. The middle of the voice is still really good, the timbre is really smoky and dark. Again, Mama Moo seemed to have a really interesting, captivating way of writing the keys of music, and her lower range is pretty decent, the middle of the voice is fantastic, but her upper belt is amazing. However, as I say, if you use a really robust chest dominant sound, it can lack the agility, I guess, and the flexibility that a more head dominant or balanced mix would give you. So when she's going to that big place, it sounds big, it sounds powerful, it sounds massive and amazing, but also sounds like it doesn't have too much space to go into because it already sounds like it's at its top volume. Um, that, however, doesn't take away from the fact that she is an amazing vocalist and an amazing power soprano. She just doesn't have the upper kind of F5 and G G5 mixes that a more round technique could possibly give you. But that C sharp 5 is so big and so powerful and sounds amazing. And that's, I think, why she's the only main vocalist, because she's the person you can center the key around so easily. And her voice is a well-rounded, really captivating instrument. And the colors it possesses are unique. It can sound lighter and heavier. Um, both simultaneously because her voice is kind of richer and thicker, but as it goes higher, it can lighten and sound huge. So yeah, she's a power singer, sounds incredibly good, has good control, great range, fantastic projection, and her mix is really good, if not a little tiny bit unbalanced, which is why I put her at number two. But yeah, as main vocalists go, she's one of the better female ones that I've heard, and I think she is fantastic. Okay, so when I was researching, Huyin and Sola were often interchanged at one and two, and I didn't fully get why, because Sola was the main vocalist. And then I listened to Huyin sing. She's a controlled, almost perfect singer. Let me get into it though, but this is why I think she's number one. Okay, so when I first heard Mamma Moo's music, Huyin was operating in that higher soprano key and I thought, oh, she must be the light sitting one, she must have the lighter vocals, and yes and no. So she has perfect breath control, her passaggio navigation is absolutely gorgeous and flawless. She can sing between a really light head dominant mix into a falsetto slash lighter head voice and it operates beautifully, it works very well, it's almost robotic in how fantastic it's delivered. That's an avenue Sola kind of has, but she doesn't operate in a falsetto quite as effortlessly with as much agility and flexibility. So Huyin has a light delivery, but she also has a naturally thicker tone. Again, it's not as thick as Sola and Hwasa, I don't think, but her voice does sound like it's got a rich timbre, and she has the most developed low register in Mamamoo, I think. Um, when she gets down into the third octave, she sounds very comfortable here. It sounds like she can start a lot of the songs in this area and it sounds the most connected. It doesn't sound hugely airy or anything. It sounds like it's got space to move into down below and it sounds really comfortable and really nice here. As she moves up, she can stay light, as I've said, and have that beautiful idle tone if she wants to, but she can also operate in the same belt keys as Sola. But she does it in a slightly more balanced, controlled way. Because as I say, when she goes in that higher range, she stays in a slightly more head dominant mix. It's more balanced and she has more flexibility. When she goes up into these notes, Sola sounds like she's belting her ass off. And it sounds amazing and it's really big. However, when she does it, 
the light connection sounds fantastic and it sounds like it's got room to move into. It sounds like she can get up to a D or, or E, F if she really wanted to, but she only does it sparingly. She doesn't do it all the time, but when she does do it, it pops, sounds amazing, it has beautiful control, amazing breath support, and the whole instrument just sounds flawless and well-oiled. So as I say, basically her voice is really rich when it goes low, the most comfortable in the group by far. The middle of her voice has two modes, it's either thicker and heavier and beautiful, or it's lighter and agile and really flexible. And when she goes into that upper mixed belt that she is, uses on occasion, it sounds like it's got lots of room, lots of agility, and it's slightly more balanced and perfect than Sol is in my personal opinion. So while Sol might be more powerful and have more oomph to her voice, I think that this person's voice is absolutely beautiful and I think it's the best voice in Mamamoo and honestly she has an incredible tone. Right guys thank you so much for introducing me to Mamamoo please more female groups like this if you want to find out my opinion on more female vocals honestly this group is amazing um, if you agree with the ranking that's amazing some people might put solo first and that's fine but to me I've explained the way I feel. Okay, next time, the next people who were most requested was Pentagon. You'd be happy to know they're finally coming up next. Right, guys, without further ado, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.